Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a brand new presentation. My name is Conan and today we're going to be talking about how you can kill your hunger. So basically on a fat loss phase, in order for you to lose your body fat, you have to keep one really simple thing in mind is that you have to be in a calorie deficit, right? This simply means that you're eating less calories than you burn. And now at the start of this fat loss journey, you may notice that it'll be somewhat pretty easy, right? It's like you're losing weight every single week, pretty effortlessly, effortlessly, <laughs> effortlessly for the most part but then the deeper in you get into your fat loss phase one thing you'll start to notice is that just naturally speaking because you're eating less calories than your body requires just to maintain its body weight you are naturally going to start to feel eventually a bit hungrier than usual right and nothing's wrong with you that is completely normal and honestly most people experience uh, feelings of hunger during a fat loss phase which honestly kind of sucks because being hangry it's not fun, right? Because it makes you more anxious, a bit more stressed, and a bit more just like chaotic with things. Um, and so these are three strategies that I use personally with along with all of my other clients to pretty much help kill our cravings, right? And now these are in no particular order. These are just things that I've kind of like implemented into my own personal lifestyle to and pretty much get rid of all my hunger while still seeing the results that I'm looking for of losing the body fat. Um, or if your main goal is just to like maintain a leaner physique, this can definitely also help you out. So as you guys can tell here by these pictures, um, amazing before and after pictures, and they pretty much utilized these strategies. So the first tip that I have for you to bash your hunger is to eat more protein. Now, protein is important for two reasons. Number one is that it actually helps build the muscle that you're looking for, right? You guys probably know this, but it is super, super important for you to help build the muscle that you're looking for and also to help recover from your workouts. And now the second thing that you guys may not be fully aware of is that protein actually is the most satiating macronutrient. So again, there's protein, carbs, and fats. Um, and protein actually takes the longest for your body to like fully break down and digest compared to fats and um, carbs as well, right? And so what's so cool about this is that by you simply increasing your protein intake, you'll start to notice that you're gonna be feeling a lot fuller for a lot longer, which is absolutely awesome. And now a general rule of thumb to keep in mind is try to eat at least, at least especially on my fat loss phase, one gram per pound of body weight of protein. So quick little example here, if you weigh 200 pounds, you're gonna eat roughly 200 grams of protein especially during a fat loss phase because your risk of muscle loss is also a lot higher when you're simply in a calorie deficit. Um, so when you're bulking, you can definitely get away with like, so again, when you're in a calorie surplus, you can definitely get away with like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight of protein uh, because carbs and fats also have protein sparing effects on your body, especially if you're in like a calorie surplus. But when you're in a deficit, protein comes increasingly more dif or more important um, to pretty much preserve the muscle mass um, that you want to hold on to during a fat loss phase, right? So protein, super, super important for that. And also it's really nice to get it helps you kind of like stay a bit fuller for longer, right? The second tip here is to focus more on lower calorie dense foods. Basically what this means is that means that you're eating foods or folks on eating more foods that are lower in calories, but a lot higher in volume. And so a couple examples of these includes mainly just your fruits, your vegetables, and your whole grains, right? So any type of fruits, any type of vegetable, um, specifically when it comes to the fruits, berries are absolutely awesome. I think strawberries and watermelon are probably the lowest calorie fruit that you can get per serving. I think per 100 grams, watermelon has like 35 or 30 calories. Same thing with strawberries. Um, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, they're all absolutely awesome for you. Raspberries also are actually super high in fiber which also helps you stay a bit fuller for longer. Um, and then same thing with like your, your vegetables as well, right? Think of like your green leafy vegetables, like your broccoli, your spinach, um, celery, kale, all that good stuff, right? Because um, I want you guys to imagine like an entire salad. It's like, it has really minimal calories. Maybe if you get some iceberg lettuce, some carrots in there, cucumbers, like you can add a lot of volume to that meal for only maybe like two, 300 calories. Maybe add some protein on top of that as well. And you got this massive bowl right here for maybe like under 500 calories that'll keep you pretty much full for like hours, right? And so if hunger is a big issue for you, definitely eat your fruits and vegetables, right? Same thing with your whole grains. So a couple of simple substitutions you can make instead of having like white bread, go for like whole wheat bread. Instead of having white pasta, go for whole wheat pasta. Um, your oatmeal is also awesome. Popcorn, don't go for like the buttery, 
packets popcorn both like just the natural popcorn and you can pop it you can pop it on yourself and um is actually a really high fibrous food as well, which is great. You can add your own seasonings on top. I typically, when I do this, I like having like a sweet and salty kind of like thing. So I add like some Splenda with some um, sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, and um, the sweet and salty combo is absolutely amazing. They also have like popcorn seasoning that you can add on top. And um, it's also a really super filling food with a uh, very minimal calories, right? So low calorie dense foods along with your protein intake by combining those two things together, already you'll start to notice that your hunger is not really a big issue here right so as you guys can tell it's just simply making smarter choices with your food intake now in my program like yes we're all about food freedom and food flexibility so um if you do want to eat whatever sweet food you want that is totally cool just know that the downside of that is that it's not going to be as filling and also what really really sucks about this is that because most of these junk foods, they're extremely hyper palatable, which basically means that they are super tasty, not only super tasty, but they leave you wanting to eat more of it, right? Like for most people, it's almost like a trigger where they'll have maybe one small little cookie or one piece of Oreo or maybe one scoop of ice cream. But then instead of them like feeling satiated, it actually gives them the opposite effect of wanting them to have even more, right? So just be fully aware of like your trigger points. Like for example, for myself, whenever I, let's say, eat um, one or two chips, it's like, well, it's gonna make me want even more chips, right? Um, whereas if I maybe eat an entire salad, which pretty like again, like calorie for calorie, um, I'm not gonna be craving any more salad. I'm gonna be nice and satisfied. It's gonna pretty much get rid of all my hunger. So just be aware of like your trigger points. And um, again, totally cool to eat your favorite junk food, whatever from time to time, but just don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna be craving even more food afterwards, right? And that is why increasing your protein intake, eating more fruits and vegetables can really come in handy. Now, the last tip that I have for you guys here, I guess it's like two in one, and that is firstly, drink more water. So by you simply increasing your water intake, um, it's gonna obviously expand your stomach and it's gonna trick your brain into thinking that it's like that it's full, um, that it just ate something, but in reality, you didn't eat anything, you just drank a bunch of water, right? So all throughout the day, make sure you're drinking lots of water, first thing in the morning, um, before even eating anything, before doing anything, just try to drink like half a liter to a liter of water first thing in the morning, especially if you wake up feeling a bit hungry, because oftentimes our bodies kind of like mistake hunger for dehydration. So before you even begin to eat anything or begin to think about eating, drink water first. This is also great. So before you have your breakfast, before you have your lunch, your snacks, your dinner, try to drink two glasses of water and you may notice that you're not as hungry as you were prior to drinking those two glasses of water, right? And then all throughout the day, um, at the gym, at work, when you're running your errands, all this stuff, just have a water bottle on you and um, you'll notice that you're not really gonna be as hungry throughout the day, right? Which is great. And now, if you find yourself in a situation where you don't really like the taste of water, um, I know a lot of people that don't, that's totally cool. What you can do instead is you can actually enhance the flavor of your water. So you can add like, make sure there's zero calories, like don't drink your calories. You can add like zero calorie sweeteners to it, like a Mio squirt or like a zero calorie Gatorade or anything like that. You guys can also like a zero calorie um, energy drink or a zero calorie soda, just anything that has zero calories is also a great way to kind of like satisfy your sweet tooth while simultaneously not drinking your calories and also staying hydrated, right? So that's another tip that I have for you guys when it comes to staying a bit more full. And now my last kind of bonus tip here is um, caffeine. So caffeine does two great things. Um, firstly, it gives you more energy, which is awesome. It also increases like your alertness. I believe I actually made a video on this a couple of days ago, so I'll probably link it down below or just scroll back on a couple of videos in the past. And I actually made an entire video on caffeine in itself and like the benefits of it, plus the downsides of it too, because um, if you abuse it, it can definitely give you the opposite effects, which is not what you want. But if you are mindful with it, it can definitely give you more alertness, give you more energy. And on top of that, it also suppresses your appetite, which is amazing right because that actually helps you like give you more energy while kind of like getting rid of your hunger which is like a win-win situation again if you stay mindful of it so that is that um and then a bonus tip here as well is um try intermittent fasting like there's nothing magical or special about this a lot of people claim that it enhances their cognitive function or that it has all these crazy 
um, benefits of it. I'm not too sure about it. It may give some people some great um, cognitive benefits, at least for myself. I feel a lot more alert when I'm in like a fasted state in the morning. I am a lot more productive this way. Uh, but it also allows me to kind of like push my meals a bit more backwards. So all in all, basically what it does, it just decreases your eating window. So instead of eating your first meal at 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., which is a 12 hour feeding window, you simply delay your breakfast, which by the way, breakfast simply means breaking the fast. So you're simply breaking your fast a bit later on in the day. So instead of having your first meal at 8 a.m., maybe you'll have your first meal at 10 a.m. or 12 p.m or 2 p.m., whatever it may be. And now all it does is just simply decreases your eating window from 12 hours to maybe 10 hours or eight hours or six hours or whatever, or yeah, or whatever it may be, right? Just do whatever you find best, but just know that this is not required for you to lose your body fat. All in all, like I mentioned to you guys at the beginning, in order to lose fat, you have to be in a calorie deficit, right? And now these are some tips that can help you get rid of your hunger and also stay within the, that deficit for you to keep making the progress that you're looking for. So hopefully you guys took something out of this video. If you guys have any specific questions for me, please let me know and I'll see you all soon. Peace. Now, if you wanna be around a community of like-minded people just like yourself who will educate you, motivate you, and inspire you to absolutely demolish your health and fitness goals, come join the Barbarian Squad down below. I guarantee you, you will not regret it one single bit, and I'll see you inside.